If you need to combine the data from one table onto the side of another table, you can use XLOOKUP, Power Query, or even Power Pivot. Here's a quick summary of the pros and cons and a little trap to beware of with Power Query. Let's go. Here's the scenario. I've got a little table of data with item A, there's three of those, item B, three of those, and item C, three of those. But I wanna do some reporting that has um, the actual names and the cost. So I need to get this data over onto this table. Let's start with the simplest one, which is XLOOKUP. If you're still using VLOOKUP or index match, then really check out XLOOKUP. A full-on video that I've done about XLOOKUP will appear, there's a little link up here. This is just a quick taster. So equals XLOOKUP, you just pick the value, put a comma, go and highlight the range you want, in this case, this column here, comma, and bring back what do you want to return? And you can actually just click on the heading. That's what I want to return. And it's looking to the left, okay, which is awesome. You can press enter. It's done. Okay, so this is the item. Beautiful. You can even, okay, when you're doing your XLOOKUP, rather than just bringing back one column, you can bring back adjacent columns. I can bring back both of those and press enter. But you can't do it inside a table. You get a spill error. Okay, still a problem. Right, so you do have to do this twice if you want the results to be in a table, but nice and easy. Well, let me do is do it again. Equals X lookup, it's so quick. Click on this item, comma, highlight where you're gonna find that result, comma, highlight the column, wherever it is that you wanna bring back. And this time I wanna bring back cost. So I press enter. If you wanna handle missing items, okay, you can put comma, and then missing, so no more if not found. Okay, no more if error, sorry, no more if error wrapping around your formula. Beautiful, and that's cost. Okay, and if something wasn't found, so let's say I had this um, item F, you get the word missing, because I put that little wrapper on the end, missing, whereas this one I didn't, and it shows NA. Okay, great. So that's XLOOKUP. Okay, I'm just gonna delete those. Power Query. Right, let's show you this. And I'll just put this back to A, so we're starting in the same spot. So right click, get data from table slash range. Now I've got my table and my data in tables, really important to set your data up like that. Control T to turn your data into these tables and even give them names by the table design menu up in the top left corner. Okay, give your tables proper names just makes it so much easier to um, interpret, debug, work out, inherit from somebody else. Right, right click, get data from table slash range, or on the data menu, there will be the from table slash range option. What I'm gonna do is say close and load this as connection only. So close and load, close and load two, and make sure I pick connection only only create connection, click OK. I'll just repeat that for this one, right click, get data from table slash range. Okay. And you can change your default settings for this, I'd recommend people change it to default to connection only, just a bit more flexible, only create connection. Beautiful. I'm just going to double click on one of these. Right, so all I'm going to do is a merge. Okay, a Power Query Merge. So I'm going to click on my item, go to Merge Queries. All right, click on my drop down with Table Lookup, and it's this item with this item. And if you had multiple items that you needed to sort of, you didn't have a single unique key, you could click multiple columns, which is pretty cool. Okay, so there we go, and we're clicking OK. And then we just expand out this little column here and say, hey, I want the cost and the item, untick that, click OK. And there we go, we've got a nice merge and a lookup, okay? Beautiful, actually I didn't want item, I wanted units. So I go back in here, I say there, I want the name and I click OK. Too easy, okay, so if you wanna make a change, click on the little cog. 
So all good. And I can click close and load. And then I just want to load this to a sheet. So right click, load to a table, an existing worksheet, and click OK. And now we've got the result. OK, so why would you do it that way? Well, you do it that way if there's more Power Query stuff to be done. Um, and also if there's if you're pulling the data from external data sources rather than just doing an next lookup inside the file. So you can pull data from here, pull the lookup table from another centralized spot, those sorts of things. OK, and also you use Power Query if you're going to load it into Power Pivot, which we'll look at in a second. But the warning, you've got to be careful about duplicates. So let's say accidentally somebody else put another Apple A in here. OK, the X lookup would just bring back the first A and bring you that back these two items, unless you do a reverse search in XLOOKUP and then it brings you the bottom one. But it's the same thing. But check out what happens in Power Query. I've got nine items here, OK? Right click, refresh. Whoa, what just happened? Look how many A's I've got. I've got six because there's two A's here. The merge has doubled them up, OK? And the numbers are all doubled up over here. That ain't good. OK, that's not good. If I change this A to, let's say, 55, just to make it really stand out and right click and refresh. You see, it's bringing back both A's. So you've got to make sure that your lookup table is unique. Now, one way of doing that, OK, if you're comfortable with this, is just simply remove duplicates on your lookup table column. But all that is going to do is keep the first lookup value. So maybe this one's right, the 55, maybe that's right. But if you simply do a remove and you go remove duplicates, it'll just keep the first one, the first A. So an upcoming Power Query challenge, stay tuned. Uh, how to address that and give a warning to the end user. OK, right. So that's just a bit of a warning about about those things. OK, the last one. Uh, let me close that down. The last one I want to show is um, using the data model. So rather than loading this to a table, so I'm going to go um, load to, only create connection, add to the data model. So I've built it in Power Query. I've pulled the data in, OK, and go OK. I'm just going to do my lookup table as well. So I'm just going to go load to and load that into the data model. And I just need to tweak my query. I don't need to do the merge when I load to the data model. So check this out. I'm just going to go back into Power Query and I'm going to get rid of the merge step. OK, so I just want that. That's it. Close and load. So these have gone into the data model. So where is this data model? Well, it's under the data tab. So I'm just going to go here, data, OK, manage the data model. Click on that. And you need to relate these two tables to each other in the diagram view. So diagram view. I'm just going to create a link. So here's my data. Here's my lookup. And the common thing is the item. OK, so this is saying it can't do it because there's duplicates. So let me, which is good. OK, it's it's avoiding. This is the problem. OK, so it won't let you create the relationship. So let me delete this row. Let me refresh, so right click refresh to load that back into the data model. Let me go in here and recreate the link. Beautiful. OK, so what good is that to us? Well, this could be the equivalent of 50 million VLOOKUPs or XLOOKUPs, right? This is the power. And this is awesome because then I can just simply go into a sheet and say insert pivot table from the data model. Click OK, and then I can actually pull in from a reporting point of view the name, OK, from the into the rows. I could bring in the uh, date and the units or whatever I need from my reporting. I could bring in the cost, etc. OK, so all those things are in there. I've got the units. I haven't sold any dates, so let me sell some dates as well. So D dates and I'll put that to a hundred and then you just have to refresh everything okay so you just go data 
refresh all, and this will all update. So for reporting, if you purely got pivot table reporting, go straight Power Query into the data model, create a relationship. If you're pulling sources from external information, you want to load it into a table, um, then potentially merging, but be careful about the duplicates. And good old XLOOKUP, you know, that should be your first choice if you can. If it's nice and simple, go and XLOOKUP. Hope you find that useful. Let other people know about the channel. Catch you later.